the Niger Senti and Nigerian Twitter sentiment couples for multilingual uh, sentiment analysis, part of the Ukraine couples research seminar for this week. Um, so today we have Shamsuddin Hassan uh, Muhammad, um, a MAPI joint doctoral program um, student, and um, he is a member of the Masakane uh, community working on low resource languages in Africa and also um, the teaching uh, staff of Bayero University, Kano. So he did work, this work with a number of other people, as you will see, so we'll let him talk to us about what he's done and then at the end he'll um, answer the questions that we might put to him. Okay, so welcome again Shamsuddin, thank you for honoring our invitation to give this talk and welcome everyone for attending. Um, I yield the floor to you, Shamsuddin. Okay, um, thank you everyone. Um, and welcome to this talk on our project called Niger Senti. Uh, my name is Shamsuddin Mohammed, and I'm a PhD student from University of Porto, Portugal. And I'm also um, a teaching staff from Bayer University, Kano, uh, also a member of Masakani and House NLP. Uh, I'm really excited to give a talk on this uh, work. And um, I hope you are uh, excited to do hear that. So um, this work is basically um, a collaborative work with many uh, of my colleagues. Uh, here you can see them. And uh, without them, this work has not been done. So um, the title of the work is Niger Senti, uh, a Nigerian Twitter sentiment corpus for multilingual sentiment analysis. Uh, we basically, uh, the main contribution for this work is to develop this corpus for sentiment analysis in four major Nigerian languages, uh, which include um, House uh, Yoruba, Igbo, and Pidgin, as you will see. So um, the talk is basically um, categorized into four uh, sessions, um, motivation, why we develop this data set, and uh, how the data set is developed and how we deal with um, communication stuff and uh, we finally then uh, some benchmark experiment on the data set to see how the data set um, is um, uh, whether we uh, develop a good qualitative one so you see um, one of the major blockers for uh, african nlp is that there isn't any um, available data sets to do NLP. And one of the reasons you can see here, this is um, the percentage of uh, ACL conference, as you can see. Uh, the top 25 uh, countries, uh, you can see the last one is Brazil. There isn't any African uh, 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 African uh, uh, country from the and uh, Basically, some languages, some common resources like top word are not available. For example, um, from House of the Language I'm coming from, top words are not available. And thank God now with the uh, Lacuna Fund, uh, many resources have been developed. But this is not actually uh, a kind of fair proportion. As you can see, 30% of the living languages in the African language. And actually, there needs to uh, be a good participation of uh, African languages and African researchers in uh, in the field of NLP. Also, this is a quote from uh, Ezani. They said, unless you have the language resources publicly available, free and open researchers will not have the data for creative solution on the fly. We will go, always have to depend on say, Google. So when we don't have this kind of resources, then we will never see any kind of progress from Africa. Now, thanks to Lacuna Fund, um, which is basically uh, an entity organization that develop uh, fund resources uh, for African languages and more or less far beyond. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Lacuna Fund has supported many, many um, uh, works toward developing resources, uh, especially data set uh, from NLP, from agriculture, many broad uh, kind of uh, fields. Uh, so our own work has been funded for, by Lacuna 
which is basically uh, development of sentiment couples and, and sentiment legs home for major Nigerian languages. You can see some of the work from Masakani, which is the Ghanaian in science for uh, scientific Africa and also name entity recognition. These are some of the work that have been funded from Lacuna. Uh, so we thank Lacuna for actually funding our work and uh, uh, we are highly grateful. So um, having seen that, our work is basically sentiment analysis, uh, basically um, developing corpus for sentiment analysis uh, in these languages. But the problem we have in Nigeria is that um, the uh, sentiment analysis that people have been doing in Nigeria is basically English centric. Uh, what I mean by that is people, what they do if they want to do sentiment analysis is they take the focus language, for example, Hausa, Yerbo, or Ivo, and now translate the focus language into English. And now they do sentiment analysis on English. Or they take the English and translate it to focus language, and now they do sentiment analysis. But this is really not how it should be. Uh, as you can see here, these are some of the corpus, uh, some of the work that have been done. For example, this work, what they do basically, they translate um, sentiment lexicon and do uh, sentiment analysis in Igbo. And also here is another work that has been done in Nigeria, basically they translate um, Bada sentiment lexicons and do uh, sentiment analysis. But the problem is that uh, the translation, when you do translation, it actually alters sentiment. And uh, that's not the way, best way to do that. Uh, I, I agree with people because there isn't any available resources developed for that, that allow them to do that. That is why people uh, actually, uh, you have been using this kind of, uh, translation uh, to do sentiment analysis. Um, so uh, these are some of the previously um, annotated data set for sentiment analysis in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is one of the most popular uh, countries uh, in Africa. But for all Nigeria, look at the only studies in Nigerian languages. We have only six studies in sentiment analysis. All others, they are English. Uh, so you can see even for Hausa, we only have one. Um, you can see not only one, the data set is not open. And um, we have uh, Evo as well, we have only one. Uh, the data set is not open. Um, only Yoruba, we have two couples available. Um, so this actually limits the participation of uh, people in Nigeria to do sentiment analysis. One, the data set is not available. Even if it is available, two, the data set is closed. I mean, it's not open source, so people will not even try to use it. Uh, as you can see here, we have only one pidgin. Pidgin is one of the languages that have been used in Nigeria quite often. Um, what I mean by that is that um, many people from different regions, part of Nigeria, they use pidgin to uh, communicate. But one of the studies that we have seen for pidgin um, they claim that their data set is available, but um, the, and the link they provide does not actually work. So ours that we created is in Hausa, Ibu, Yerba, and Pigeon. It is open source, manually annotated. And the interesting thing is that because Nigeria is such kind of multilingual society, um, when you have to it, it tends to be uh, somehow code mixed, then we have created both monolingual and code mixed tweaks in the sense that we have monolingual and code mix. Right, uh, these are some of our contributions. Number one, we create um, level tweets for four major Nigerian languages. Number two, we release the largest Twitter corpus in these languages. Um, well, I mean, uh, unannotated corpus. So uh, we uh, release the largest annotated and even unannotated, we release this one. Number three, we release the manually uh, annotated sentiment lexicon in these languages, Hausa, Ibo, and Yoruba. And four, we also train models, um, uh, pre train multilingual models, and um, to do some kind of benchmark experiment on this data set. And we release all these uh, resources available the code, um, the, uh, the data set, everything is released, and um, people try to use um, uh, these resources. And we believe this actually will enhance. Um, sentiment analysis research in Nigeria. Um, from all these things we have been seeing, people have started asking us uh, to give them the data set and stuff like that. So this will actually a, a kind of a game changer in the field of NLP and sentiment analysis in Nigeria. 
Um, so these are the focal languages. Why do we focus on this language? We have also Yoruba. These are the most uh, widely spoken languages in Nigeria. That's why we use them. And um, initially, what we have previously was like uh, we have only three languages, Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. But we added uh, pidgin at the end because we uh, learned that the pidgin um, is, is also spoken in a different part of Nigeria. Um, so this is actually the language characteristics in Nigerian um, you can see uh, some of the languages uh, like Hausa, the uh, languages without uh, any kind of uh, diacritics, um, both Igbo and Pidgin, these are languages with um, kind of diacritics. And uh, uh, they actually um, have some kind of um, uh, in, uh, diacritics. In Twitter, people don't actually tend to write um, Pidgin, I mean, Yoruba or uh, Igbo with diacritics. And the absence of these diacritics actually pose some kind of challenges. One is that um, people, uh, the annotators, if there isn't any diacritics, fail to understand really what the uh, tweet means, or uh, even the sentiment changes, as we will see. So these are uh, the kind of uh, characteristics. So now the data set collection. So now we have seen the motivation and the uh, what we have uh, uh, developed. Now the next thing we see is how we actually um, do such kind of collection of this data set. Um, the first thing is um, we actually uh, uh, got some problem at the first instance that we try to get sweet data. Uh, there are actually um, 32 high resource languages that have been supported by Twitter academic API. But when we try to grab sweet from Twitter in Hausa, Yoruba, or Evo, Twitter does not actually support, Twitter API does not actually support all of these languages. And that poses challenges for us to, um, you know, grab to it um, uh, without any hassle. Um, so what we do basically is uh, we come up with uh, a kind of approach that actually uh, allow us to grab uh, all these languages. Number one, we use corpus. So we take um, uh, a large corpus in each language, um, different domain, uh, and uh, we create a, 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 a stop word in each language. And now we use also uh, emoji and uh, sentiment language. So the first thing is we create this stop word, and now we crawl tweets and specify the language, uh, I mean location, Nigeria. And now we potentially those tweet with this kind of stop words will be a tweet in either Hausa, Yoruba, or Igbo. But also to actually, um, increase the potential of having tweets that are sentiment oriented or sentiment carrying uh, tweet. What we basically do is that uh, we take a particular um, stop word and connect it with an emoji and search Twitter that any tweet that contains this stop word with emoji then return it and potentially that uh, actually uh, is a tweet in that language. So this actually is not, um, I mean, the best way to collect the tweets, but uh, we don't have the API that support that. Number two, we use translated lexicon. So when we uh, grab these tweets, before we go to annotation, we make sure that all those tweets are basically uh, sentiment uh, current tweet. Now, how can we do, be sure with that? Number one, we use a uh, semi supervised way to grab tweet. That is, we use to grab tweet based on happy emoji or negative emoji. But on top of that, we translated um, some of the below lexicon into positive and negative. We translate them into all of these languages, for example, how say Yoruba. And now we search, and after the translation of this lexicon, uh, native speakers actually corrected the, um, the translations. And uh, we use this lexicon to filter all the tweets we have, to filter all the tweets we have and graph only tweet that has this kind of sentiment lexicon that we translated. And also we use um, hashtag like Yoruba Day because it's really difficult to find tweets in uh, Nigerian in this kind of uh, languages. But it's okay for Hausa, we have tons of Hausa tweets. But for Yoruba and Yibo, it's really difficult to grab those tweets. Uh, so, but uh, like hashtag Yoruba Day actually allows to crawl many uh, tweets in Yoruba. Um, but this actually posed some challenges as well after we collect a uh, tweet with stop word. Number one is that there is stop word overlap. So for example, when we collect a tweet with Inke, uh, which is Igbo, it produces a tweet in Hausa, which is, um, uh, I mean, Yarabi Budianeke. So 
What I mean by this is that it's what we call soft word overlap. These languages have soft word that actually overlap. We don't know that, but it turns out that when we finish the connection, we come trying to do annotation and stuff like that, we understand that um, trees that have been uh, collected for Hausa contain Igbo. Trees that have been collected for Igbo, they contain Yoruba, something like that. So now we do, um, we need to also go further step to filter these languages. So we use Google CLD3 um, uh, to actually detect languages. And one, on top of that, we use um, parameters. For example, if we want to uh, collect tweets in Hausa, then we set parameters in Hausa states, like um, Kano, uh, Sokoto. If I want to collect um, Igbo, I will set parameters, language and parameter, the radius where I will collect tweets. So this is basically where we do the, uh, how we do the collection of the tweet. Okay, um, annotation process. So um, the first thing is um, after we finish the um, collection of tweet, then we move to the next step, which is annotation process. Um, so uh, Ignatius, if there's any question, I can take it before I move forward. Yeah, I can't find any question yet in the chat, so just move on. Um, okay. But yeah, if you want to interrupt the lecture, if there's something you need him to clarify, put it in the chat, we'll relate. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, before we move, uh, after we finish the data collection, then we move to annotation process. So uh, the first thing we do is uh, our annotation is five-way class. We consider positive, negative, neutral, mix, and indeterminate. And this is where we give to the annotators to annotate. Um, and we use a light tag tool. Uh, which is basically offers um, free academic. Uh, if you're academic, you can use it free, and we are really thankful for that. And for each language, we use uh, free annotators, um, which are native speakers, to annotate the language uh, for each tweet. And after we uh, do the recruitment for the annotators, then we do a training for them. And um, these annotators are basically, for example, for Hausa, they are our students. Uh, they are. A computer science student, and some of them are linguists, exclusive for Yoruba. And we do a basically a iterative training. What I mean by iterative is that um, the first training we do, um, uh, the annotators um, may have some kind of uh, big understanding of some sort, and then we iterate uh, uh, based on that iteration, we improve our uh, annotation guideline and stuff like that. And we went for the annotation after the training. Um, so. Uh, what we do is we uh, do annotation in batches. Uh, what I mean by in batches is that uh, we give the annotators 1,000 tweets to annotate. And that means we have approximately 30 batches for the tweet. And after the annotators finish each batch, for example, the first batch, um, what we do is we check where the annotators have um, complete disagreement. Now, what I mean by complete disagreement is that, for example, the annotator, someone say positive, someone say negative, someone say neutral, this is disagree. Then we ask them, okay, we give it to them, discuss the tweet, what happened, and now we thought this will actually improve the next batch for the iteration. Uh, but uh, as we see, this kind of uh, what we assume does not actually help while uh, it does not actually improve the annotation process. Um, so the adjudication, uh, we give the annotators where they actually disagree to adjudicate, but uh, we don't actually in include these tweets that annotators adjudicate in our data set. The main aim is just the annotators to allow them to discuss um, what happened and maybe they can learn more better and so that they can annotate the next iteration uh, much better. Right, so determining the gold standard. So, uh, after we finish the uh, annotation, uh, the way we determine the gold standards actually differs from the uh, normal way it's being used, which is uh, majority board. So we use some kind of, uh, some form of majority board, which is basically, uh, number one is three-way agreement. Um, what we mean by three-way agreement is that um, the annotator say it's positive, everyone agree with that, then that's the gold standard level. We have three-way disagreement where the annotators um, basically say, okay, positive, negative, neutral, they all disagree. Um, we discard this um, tweet. We don't include it in our annotation. 
Um, the next one is two-way partial disagreement. So, for example, if we have positive, positive, neutral, or negative, negative, ne uh, neutral, positive, positive, indeterminate, you can see this one is two-way partial disagreement. What we mean by this is that we have positive, positive, but this is neutral. The third person say neutral. It means it's not complete disagreement from the first two. Then we call this partial disagreement. In this case, if we have partial disagreement, we follow the majority vote. Uh, we say, okay, vote is positive. But the third one, as I said, is some form of um, majority vote. Uh, this is two-way total disagreement. What we mean by this is, if two people annotated say positive, positive, but another person say negative, this is two-way total disagreement. It means it's not partial and it means um, Something is wrong with this uh, because someone says this is positive, another person says this is negative. So we don't actually take the uh, majority vote here. What we do is we employ another independent annotator to adjudicate or to give a final class for this two-way total disagreement. So we give, uh, we filter them all these cases, and um, we ask an uh, independent annotator. And now he annotated this one, and we considered his final classification at the uh, final stop. So that's how we determine the gold standards in our data set. OK, um, so uh, this is the total number of what we have in our data set. Um, for Hausa, um, we have this number, Yoruba, we have this, and Ivo, we have this. Um, so uh, the reason why I didn't put the uh, uh, pigeon is that um, we are still working on pigeon and um, we gonna have the same estimate of these numbers uh, 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 maybe 30 because we annotated 30,000 I think or 32 but um, we are still finishing for the pigeon so this is um, the data set we have and we can see that um, we actually annotated a lot and uh, these all these data set are uh, uh, are now in public space and people can use it and do a lot of stuff. It's not only sentiment analysis, but other uh, social media downstream tasks. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. So um, here, as you can see, is basically um, the percentage of the code mix and monolingual in our corpus. So as you can see here, we have Hausa, Ibo, and Yoruba. Hausa, you can see like 77% we have monolingual, and also Yoruba we have. But it turns out that Ibo, um, maybe they use code mix quite often. Um, we don't know, but this data suggests that uh, Ibo among Nigerians they use um, code mix more often than other languages like um, Hausa and uh, Yoruba. Um, yeah, so another thing is we encountered about this data set is their critic challenges. Um, so what we mean by this is that Hausa does not actually have any diacritics and the annotators obviously annotate, give it class without any kind of indeterminate. But for other languages like Ivo and Yoruba, sometimes without the critics, the tweet doesn't make sense and some stuff like that. So we have large number of uh, indeterminate in the Ivo and Yoruba annotations, uh, but for Hausa, we don't have that. Uh, Another thing we encountered uh, regarding the diacritic is uh, tonality challenge. So what we mean by this is that Yoruba language can help to give meaning and context. For example, if we see this one, it's a sentence in Yoruba without the tone, if you, you can see they have the same writing, but it can have different opposite meaning. 
when using different tones. And this will give different sentiment. I want or more up or above um, the children washing the dishes and the other one, the children broke the dishes. So you can see this one poses um, a serious challenge to the annotators that there is no tone on this stuff and actually one of them in negative and another one may be positive. So um, we have serious um, top and all this one uh, uh, we included uh, after agreement with the uh, independent annotator, we uh, include them in our data set. So also Evo it used tones to actually make some sense. And you can see here we have the same uh, tweets for with different sentiment attached to it. So you can see the first one um, is something negative. Will you ever be able to talk cancel the IFO? And you can see the second one is um, I'm in praise. So you can see this is um, the uh, problem without tonality and also the um, punctuation mask can actually introduce a lot of um, issue on understanding the meaning of the tweet and which pose some challenges to the annotators to give um, the correct class uh, for the annotation. Right, um, so any question before we go on? Take questions uh, before we go to the last slide. Um, there, there is a question in the chat, but um, Heather doesn't mind it um, asked at the end. Oh, okay, okay, so, All right. Yep. All right. But let me just point out here that the Igbo example you gave on tonality, the, there's no difference between the, the, the tone marks for the first and the second, um, um, you know, question examples, if you see what I mean. Exactly oh. no difference between the tone marks in this case. Um, mm. I think actually the first O, the beginning O should actually have a high tone, which is pointing to the right rather than to the left to, to uh -huh. differentiate. Yeah, just in case. OK, cool. Right. So. Um, right, so that is um, about uh, sentiment data set. Um, apart from sentiment data set, we create um, sentiment lexicon, which basically a dictionary of um, opinion words um, and heads lexicon. Uh, how we do it is basically when we finish the sentiment annotation for all these languages, we now filter those tweets that they have all the three annotators classify them as positive. And now we take the sample and now we give it to another uh, set of annotators different tag words in this tweet. So when people say that this is positive or negative, we think potentially that um, this tweet contain uh, some positive or negative word in them. So we give them to annotators and now we basically use um, a simple majority vote uh, to determine the tag. If two people say that this is positive, then we take that as positive. Uh, but if we have some kind of disagreement similar to uh, sentiment data set, we employ as different independent annotator to actually validate this stuff. Uh, also, this one we did it in an iteration. Uh, what we mean by this is that the first thing we grab the first um, 1000 annotated tweets and now we give it to the annotators, the tag words in these tweets as positive and negative. And now we take these tag words and now filter the already annotated data sentiment data set. Any tweets that contain these words, tag word for the first 100, uh, 1,000 away, we filter them. And now we give, we select those that do not contain these first um, uh, words that have been tagged. So we iteratively filter the tweet to get those that. Uh, another thing we also make available um, is uh, translated lexicon. So we basically, before we, as I said, before we start grabbing uh, crawling tweets, what we did basically, we translated some a lexicon like the new and also um, translated emotion lexicon NRC 
Um, we use this one to, after we collected our tweets, to uh, uh, filter tweets that are actually uh, uh, sentiment carrying tweets. And uh, these uh, translated lexicon, they are actually been corrected by native speakers and uh, we use them for the, but the, the sentiment lexicon, uh, all the manually annotated and translated, they are also free for researchers and uh, students to use. Um, so the last part of the data set is uh, annotator agreement. So as you can see here, um, we have five class agreement. Um, we have positive, negative, neutral, indeterminate, and mixed. But um, it turns out that these five class um, we have do have a uh, very low inter annotator agreement. As you can see here, for Hausa is 0 0.487, 0 0.88, 0 0.434 for um, Nigerian pigeon. This is not really, but it's not really bad, but it's not um, encouraging because 0 0.458 um, um, place kappa is, um, is acceptable. Um, we said, okay, we have a very uh, low uh, Kappa agreement. Let's investigate and see what happened. What we do is this: we take each class, positive, negative, neutral, and find the agreement of this stuff. So, for positive, what is the interannotator agreement among in the whole corpus? For negative, for for each class here, as you can see here, the mix is the one with the least agreement. 0 0.29, 0 0.020. This means that mixed class, the annotators really confuse or they give it a different because it's somehow border. So if something is mixed, then it can be positive, right? So people will not give it a mix, but they will give it positive. And a mix can be like it can turn positive and negative, but people they say, okay, this is more negative, and they give it negative. So it means what I what actually um, makes this um, uh, the uh, covers to be low was that uh, we have um, a very uh, low agreement in the mixed class. So we say, okay, let's consider using three class, positive, negative, and neutral. And you can see the uh, interannotical fairly increase. So we basically use um, for, uh, these three class that is positive, negative, and neutral. And this actually um, increased the uh, as you can see, the inter-annotator agreement among the annotators. And another thing we considered is the inter-annotator agreement performance over time. What this means is that uh, we annotate approximately 30 tweets in each language in 30 in 1,000 batches. So first batch 1,000, second batch 1,000. We plot the performance of inter-annotator agreement among these uh, uh, in different languages. And it turns out that what we hypothesized before was that the inter-annotator agreement performance will increase in, over time because we presume the annotators will actually be learning the process and they will make less mistakes over time. So they will update their knowledge of how the annotation works but it turns out that this is not true. Um, what we hypothesized was actually not the case. It, uh, as you can see here, um, one of the annotators like Ibo, like in one time, um, it drops up to zero, less than 0 0.2, you can see. So what we um, recommend in this case is that instead for us to uh, hire three annotators to annotate over 30 tweets, it's better to annotate um, multiple annotators before we don't actually um, um, go for cross-sourcing, but it is good, uh, maybe we can annotate, uh, for example, the tweet we are doing now for Pigeon, we annotate like nine annotators. So uh, what we hypothesize that um, uh, annotators, like um, few annotators can, performance can increase over time, actually does not do that. As you can see here also, it's only um, a year over that actually, um, some kind of consistency, which is um, uh, 
not less than 0.5% uh, in the inter-annotator agreement. All right, um, so that's um, the data set we have. And the last part of the talk is about the uh, benchmark uh, experiment we run on these um, couples so that we can see how good they are. So before I continue, um, I can take question if there is any. So there is a question in the chat um, about the top words that you use, but just to remind you, we are uh, we have about 15 minutes left to the end of the talk. So, um, uh, so let me can speed it up after the question. So the, right. the, the question, yeah, well, it depends on whether you want to finish the talk and then take uh, the question. Yeah, we have 15 minutes. Let me finish. Um, so let me go quickly. So the right. and, um, we basically I uh, use state of the art um, approaches um, uh, for sentiment classification models, use pre trained uh, multilingual language models, and uh, we use uh, different kind of uh, experiments. The first one is using uh, multilingual, uh, like MBAD, XLM, we experiment with this stuff. Um, the second one is using uh, language adaptive fine tuning, uh, and we use also multi-tag sentiment classification, then zero shot class uh, cross-lingual transfer. So these are some of the experiments we do on this, and these are the results. So for the first one, um, majority classifier, um, because the classes in this tweet, um, they actually, the classes we have, they are not actually uh, well balanced. So we first say, okay, let's calculate the uh, majority classifier using DOM majority classifier, and you can see because the pigeon, uh, we have um, a, a very secure distribution in pigeon, as you can see. Uh, that's why here we have up to 60 performance uh, for the majority classifier. Um, but other languages, you can see we have Ibu and Yoruba. Uh, this is using weighted F1 and micro F1. This is the performance of majority classifier. Um, so the first thing we do here is. Uh, uh, we try to do um, pre-train um, uh, MBAT, AFRIVATA, XLRM, RAMBAT, these multilingual uh, pre trained language models. And you can see they have varying performance among them. But what happened is that um, the AFRIVATA here is the winner. Why? Because AFRIVATA is a language model that has been trained on all languages in this study. Um, some African languages are included, like Hausa, Yerbo, Ibo, Pidgin. All these languages um, have been trained in this uh, Afriba Talaj. Uh, but MBAT, uh, you can see, only has Yoruba and SLM based Hausa and uh, MDBARA based has none. And remember, but interestingly, is that um, the MDBAT. None of the Nigerian languages have been trained, have been in the training, but it actually performs better than other languages. Like uh, you can see it has like 80, which is better than MBAT base, which uh, have been trained on this language. Uh, so that is uh, one thing we um, have the results here. The next one uh, experiment we have is um, language adaptive fine tuning. Uh, because language adaptive fine tuning have been shown to improve um, the over the baseline with additional pre training monolingual data. So we use um, two different kind of data sets um, to fine tune the, uh, all these models uh, general domain and Twitter domain. However, as you can see, the general domain performance actually uh, is better than even the one we find chain with tweet corpus. So for example, you can see this one, uh, Hausa here has been trained, uh, fine tuned with only 32 MB, but uh, we have 318 MB general corpus uh, for data set that we have been fine tuned. And we attribute this uh, actually performance because the data set for uh, that we fine tune for this language is, is not large enough. Among all these ones, uh, Hausa is the only one with the largest corpus in Twitter. 
we cannot find um, Yoruba, Igbo data sets so large enough. So we have only this one. So uh, we can also have pigeon, as you can see, like um, uh, the, uh, the pigeon also is large enough, but not as Hausa. So that's why here we can see, but also we can see the performance of AfriBata is still competitive here with uh, language adaptive fine tuning. Uh, as you can see here, the performance is not that um, very uh, gap between them. So that is um, the performance of the uh, data set using uh, language adaptive fine tuning. Okay, um, the next one is um, we also use multi-task sentiment classification. So what we do here is basically uh, having learned that um, these um, Aprivata and MDVata um, performs based on these um, data sets. Then we take these uh, language models and now put all the data sets, Hausa, Yoruba, Ibo, and Pigeon, we put them all together. And now we do multi tag sentiment classification. So we put all the training data set in a single pool and we do multi-class, uh, multi-task sentiment classification. And so you can see um, Afri Vata the winner, um, but we observe some kind of slide drop performance um, with MD Vata based, uh, uh, MD Vata, uh, which actually shows that um, within the Nigerian context, um, uh, these kind of putting all these couples can be used in um, applications to detect sentiment uh, in Nigerian languages by using this uh, free train language model because they can do even such kind of multi-task sentiment classification and with um, gradually good performance. Um, zero shared cross-lingual transfer. Um, so this is the last um, experiment we did. Uh, we use um, data set from semi 2017 uh, and do zero shared cross-lingual transfer. And you can see that the performance is actually uh, for Afri Bata is still uh, the winner here, but also you can see the PCM, which is this one here, uh, you can see it has the more or less better performance among all the languages, simply because the PCM, which is Nigerian Pigeon, was trained on these languages, uh, on this pre-trend, and also it actually it is like the fire. Uh, uh, Pigeon is more or less, looks like more or less like English. That is why it does have somehow kind of this performance. Uh, between all other uh, performance uh, uh, languages. And finally, um, sample efficiency transfer, we actually um, try to do uh, this um, classification using Afrivata only with very number of uh, tweaks. You can see here, uh, with 1,000 tweaks, it even reached a very, very good performance. This means that uh, the these pre-trained language models and our data set is quite good, that they can do a good predictive sentiment classification with few data sets. And you can see here, with only 10 um, tweaks, it's even better than the uh, base classifier, a uh, dummy classifier, majority classifier that we try first. And with 100 tweaks, it actually reached uh, somehow you can see uh, good performance. Right, so in conclusion, I think I have nine minutes, um, we present Niger Senti, which is basically um, a corpus uh, for sentiment uh, analysis in four major Nigerian languages. Um, we also present uh, sentiment lexicon uh, in all this language, which we made them available for researchers. And uh, we do some kind of benchmark experiment, and we learned that Afri Vata is actually the winner among these languages. 
among these uh, models. Uh, our future is uh, work is to basically extend this uh, nature Santi to Afri Santi to have um, more languages in the African uh, continent uh, to be part of Afri Santi, and we started working towards that. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Um, um, yeah, the paper is here and the code and everything is from our GitHub pages. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, um, and now I can now take questions. Yeah. So th thank you very much. Um, we're we're running behind the schedule now. It's quite tight, but that's a very interesting talk. Thank you so so much for the time. It, the, the pace of the presentation that makes it easy for people to actually follow and understand what you're doing. Um, Heather, do you want to ask your question yourself or do you want me to relay that? Um, okay, all right, so sorry about that. So, um, um, uh, Shamsuddin, the question is about uh, stop words. The question is, will the stop words lists also be made publicly available? That's number exactly. one. Exactly. One. So, yeah. Okay. I thought that's not. So the other one is when handling stop words overlap, you use a language detection model to disambiguate the tweets. So this model you used, um, which includes pigeon, um, was it trained on these languages? Ah, good question. So, or, or, or mm -hmm. did you train? Did you need to train it yourself? Yeah. yeah. So good question. So um, this is something I skipped. I didn't talk. So for pigeon. Um, we don't have language model to detect this stuff. So what we do, we basically do a simple statistical model to actually detect whether something is pigeon or not, because um, there isn't a simple way to do that. Because in pigeon, you can have something uh, that is not pigeon, but Nigerian English. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. Yeah. So no, what really we do different. basically yeah. is this. We get a linguist which is actually um, doing a PhD in Pidgin, in Nigerian Pidgin, we curate stop words that are suddenly Pidgin. And now what we do basically is that to avoid the issue whereby, because we have something, we say, oh, this is Pidgin, but you say, no, it's Nigerian English. So now what we do is that at least a tweet contains three stop words from Pidgin. Now we take these tweets, and now when we give them to the annotators, all the tweets turns out to be pidgin, not English, Nigerian English. So this is how we basically do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other question? Yeah, um, Heather is saying thank you to you, and then thanking you for the talk as well, and thanking all of us. Yeah, any other question, please? Yeah. While we wait for people to type or think about it, because we have about two or three minutes left before we leave, um, I was wondering if so. When you say that there is a, an overlap of stop words um, between languages, how how did that impact the the? Ah, okay. Did, did you yeah? How did that impact the whole process, whether at the annotation level or if you managed to carry them? Along, you gave an example of Nke, for instance. Did you have to then remove it from the, the languages at the yeah. at the data set creation level? Yeah. So when we create um collect the tweets with these stop words, um we thought that these tweets are uh, okay. When I collect a tweet pitch um evil, I will thought these tweets are evil solely. But it turns out some tweet from Hausa creep in into this. Now, what we do basically is that to use Google language detection, Google language detection API to detect whether something is pigeon, I mean, whether which language it is. So when we have like 100% that it is evil, then we take that one. When we have like 100%, then we take that one. So we use basically Google API to detect these languages after, uh, because we cannot just go after crawling with this software, we cannot just move to the annotation process because it turns out that there is a mixture of languages among them. So we, uh, in between, we had to use uh, language detection, which Pidgin is not actually, uh, uh, is not uh, supported by this language detection. Yeah. So we use the statistical approach to actually uh, detect what is Pidgin, what is Nigerian English. Um, so that is what we use. Um, yeah. 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 
That, that That's very interesting. I'll actually think that 100% will be very strict, really, because um, most of these language detection systems will not be able to completely differentiate between one language and the other. Exactly. OK, that's, that's a question from Paul. And it says, where you have different proportions for code mixing, do you think this is due to your collection mechanisms? And um, is it representative of the wider differences and maybe connections and social networks of the different Twitter user communities? Yeah. Um, so, do you get that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the code mixing proportion. So I can say, yes, number one, Hausa speakers don't actually code mix much than Igbo. And Ignatius can tell Sabot. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't attest to that, yes. Yeah. We, we so, speak all the languages. Too. Yeah. So uh, the house art people, as you can see, they represented uh, from the slides, they don't actually code mix, which is basically true in the Nigerian context. Um, the evil where we have like the maybe half, half, what I mean by the 50%, close to 50, is code mix. It actually reflects the nature of how Igbo um, language is because they don't actually. It's even hard to find Igbo tweets in Twitter, like or like how say Yoruba Igbo is really difficult. And if you find it, it's called mixing. So do you think is this is due to your collection mechanism, and is it representative of whether yes, it's different uh, representation of whether differences me connection and social network. Yeah. So basically, is um, the real life um, situation in Nigerian context. Um, Igbo basically um, code mix more often than other two languages. Okay, thank you very much. I really do agree with you. Um, I really do agree with you. The, one of the major problems we have with Igbo is actually uh, um, uh, uh, collecting text on social media, like other languages can easily collect text that people people don't speak Igbo a lot, but don't actually write it as much as they speak it without mixing it up with other languages. Okay, we 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 have only one minute left to the end of this, and I don't think we have enough time for another question. But it's been a wonderful time um, sharing with you what you've done on this project. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And um, we'll be posting the next talk for next week um, on our platforms. So follow us if you want to join any of those talks. Thank you so much, Shantan, for coming to this talk today. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um,